Hi guys, I hope you're doing really well. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Muriel. I'm a food photographer, recipe developer, and content creator. And on this channel, I talk all about food photography, vegan recipes, and personal growth. And in today's video, we're covering a topic that is highly, highly, highly requested. And I'm talking about backdrops. So if you're interested in knowing which backdrops I use in my food photography, make sure to watch this video from beginning to the end. So I have four types of different backdrops. Three of the four types are actually backdrops that I purchase from companies. So the first type would be backdrops that are made out of wood or plywood. The second type are backdrops that are made out of vinyl. And the third type are actually ceramic tiles. The four types of backdrops, which are not necessarily purchased from someone or a company, they're just backdrops that I make myself. So they're DIY backdrops. In today's video, I'm going to share with you the backdrops that I've made myself. However, I'm not going to go in detail and sharing with you how I made those. But if you're interested in learning how I do, maybe let me know in the comments below and that could be a topic for another video. So the first category of backdrops that I have in my collection are backdrops that are purchased from companies and they're made out of either wood or plywood. And in my collection, I don't have too many that are part of that little category just because they tend to be backdrops that are more expensive, they're higher end, and they come from other parts of the world. So that means that generally speaking, I buy them in US dollars and being Canadian, sadly, the exchange rate is not great. Here are some of the backdrops that I own that are made out of plywood. All of these backdrops I've actually purchased from a company based in Russia called Woodville Backdrops. They make very, very high quality backdrops. What's really nice about them is the fact that they're double-sided so I can shoot on the two surfaces. I love the fact that they're highly textured. Out of all these backdrops from Woodville Backdrops, the ones that I go back to the most often are this one, which is a wooden backdrop. I really like to use this one in my moody shots. And the other one that I really, really love is this light gray, almost like cement type of look. It's very versatile, it's quite neutral. It works very well in bright and airy shots. And also in this one, I love the texture that they were able to create with all the different spots and the little cracks. It's, it's really beautiful and it's super highly versatile. Some of the main positive things about these type of backdrops is the fact that they're very high quality. They're handmade, so they're really beautiful. You can tell there's a lot of time and effort put into the details of the backdrops. They're super sturdy, like I haven't had them chip or anything. In terms of the negatives, they're heavier. I don't know if I would necessarily bring them if I was doing a shoot outside of my house. They're not the heaviest backdrops I own, but they're still relatively heavy. And one other negative is, again, the price. I've mentioned this before. These are pretty expensive, but they are very high quality, so they'll last a very long time. So the second category of backdrops that I own are backdrops that are made out of vinyl. I honestly just recently got into vinyl backdrops after seeing a lot of people using them on Instagram. And these backdrops are very nice. They're super high quality. I love the fact that you can just roll them up and store them like that. Um, also, they're super easy to clean. The website Capture by Lucy has quite a lot of different types of backdrops to choose from. And they're very light. So if ever you want to transport them to shoot on location, or even for me, like I'm shooting in my apartment and all my backdrops are stored in the hallway. But walking from hallway to kitchen, which is where I shoot, you know, I still have to transport backdrops back and forth quite a bit. And because they're vinyl, it's not too heavy and it's, it's kind of nice. Also, they're highly inexpensive. These backdrops are 30 pounds per backdrop, which is quite good compared to some other options that are out there. In terms of the negative is because it is vinyl backdrop, you don't have as much texture on them. Like the texture is printed, but if you're, let's say, shooting in like a three quarter angle or even a straight on, you're not going to see textures coming out of the backdrop. So that's kind of so-so, but you know, for the price and for the versatility and for the fact that they're so transportable, it's really, really good. I also recently got sent a couple of backdrops from Lucy Beck, who owns now a company where she sells backdrops for food photography. You can buy them on Etsy and they're also very high quality. The textures are really unique, which I like. I've shot this green photo using this green backdrop, which is very different and very out there but it's fun to sometimes be a little bit creative and again like as i've mentioned because these backdrops are not as expensive you can buy more of them and kind of experiment with different styles so the third category of purchased backdrops are ceramic tiles 
So these tiles, you can actually find them at home hardware shops. One thing to keep in mind about ceramic tiles is that not all hardware shops actually sell them individually. I had to go to quite a few different locations to actually find a place that sells them individually. But when I did, I bought two, uh, which are these two ones that I really like. I love the fact that they're gray, they're neutral. They work really well with so many different types of setups. I also really like them because of the fact that they're ceramic. So you can wipe them up like super easily. They'll never stain. However, this is probably the biggest negative about these ones. They're very heavy. Fun fact here, a little story time. The time that I purchased these backdrops was about three, four years ago. And at the time I didn't have access to a car. So it was a hot summer day and I went to the Home Depot, which is a home hardware store here in Canada. So I found these beautiful ceramic tiles and I was really excited about them. I saw them first, I didn't lift them. I did not lift them. But when I did, I realized what I had gotten myself into because I had to carry two ceramic tiles all the way back home by bus. It was so heavy. I came back home, I was drenched. And the people on the bus looked at me like, what is she doing? What is she buying? And I was, I had just placed them like on my belly and held them up like with my arms outstretched and just walking on the street with those. It, it was funny, but you know, it was all worth it because I still use these towels quite a bit, uh, even these days. So here are a couple of examples of images that I've shot with these towels. They're quite matte, the ones that I have. So it makes it that there's not too much reflection with them. Another positive thing about these tiles is the fact that they're quite affordable. For both of these tiles, I, I had spent only $40, which is quite good. If you know anything about the food photography backdrops, those things can be expensive. And $40 for two is quite a bargain, actually. Fourth and final category of backdrops are DIY backdrops. I personally really like DIY backdrops. I don't have as much as I would have liked just because it is a process that is time consuming to create backdrops and to source the different colors and the, the different tools that you need to, to make backdrops. I personally really like this black one. It has quite a bit of texture that I created using a sponge as well as a paintbrush. I use this backdrop a lot in my moody photography. It's one of those go-to backdrops. In the same line, there's also this blue backdrop that I use quite a bit as well. In my moody photography, I shot this burger image using this backdrop. In terms of other funkier colors, I really like this pink backdrop that I've used in the past. I like this one, especially when I want to create a shot that is a little bit more funky and monochromatic and artistic. And I've used it in this hard light shot that I really, really love. One thing to keep in mind when you do get into making your own DIY backdrops is first of all, the size, what's the ideal size for you? Second of all is the thickness of your backdrop. So in the past, I've made quite a few backdrops that were a little bit too thin, to be honest. And what happens with that is that with time, they'll start curving a little bit and they're not going to stay flat. In the next batch of backdrops that I'm going to make, um, I really want to select backdrops that are a little bit thicker so that I don't get this curving effect. So those are the four types of backdrops that I use in my food photography. I would definitely encourage you to experiment with the different types of backdrops and see what works best for you. I personally always recommend to have one or two very good high quality backdrops in your kit just because they'll produce really beautiful pictures and they're very high quality so they'll last you a while. But I also recommend playing around with vinyl backdrops and ceramic tiles and doing your own backdrops because those options not only are cheaper but also can yield very very beautiful photography in the end. So that's it you guys. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. Also let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to share with you a little bit about uh, my process of how I go about making my own backdrops. And also be sure to check the description because I added a bunch of links uh, to all the companies that I mentioned in this video. And on that note, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and I'll see you very soon.